I have been in office situations and media situations where somebody was doing incredibly well at their job and somebody else got jealous and kind of kind of undermined them. Um, I'm not saying that Tyler Bray can in any shape, form or fashion undermine what Joe Milton has done. But he did have a tweet, I don't know if you saw it, that said, well, he can still throw the ball 80 yards. I'm paraphrasing, Caleb. Is that about right? That's exactly right. Okay. Um, why would he take a shot at a at a former at a current player? Why would a former ball who's doing okay, he's probably what making eight hundred thousand dollars, I think is the minimum. Um, who said that? not anymore, I'm but sorry. Tyler, Tyler Bray said it. And yes. not well, not anymore. Tyler Bray's no longer in the NFL, but he did have like seven years worth of NFL money in his pocket, and he took that shot. You know what I mean? He has that right to say it. You know what I mean? But come on now, seven years. I mean, come on, be be a be a good alumni. That's all I can tell you. You know what I mean? Hey, support your program, support the team, and support the kids around there. Don't be a jackass. And I think he clearly was a jackass. And the problem I have, too, with Tyler Bray saying it, it would be one thing if Josh Dobbs, who I think we all think the most of, right? If he said something like, um, the simple fact is Joe Milton has to play better. This is a complicated offense. If he tweeted something like that, that would you would kind of see that he's coming from the right place, at least. Sure. But just to take a backhanded shot, I mean, Tyler Bray, if, if anybody still loved him, that uh, was a Tennessee fan, that that might be the final straw, Spencer. I just thought that was really tacky. Well, let's just be honest with you. When you said who he was, I was like, well, I don't remember him too much. So, I mean. Well, and that's what probably people say about me, and that's fine. I don't care. But, you know, this is my opinion on this show, so. I'll, I'll, y'all are, and Spencer, since you're an alumni, you are much classier than I am with people. But uh, I, because I, <laughs> because I am, because I'm not a former player, I'm allowed to say certain things that I feel about. I think Tyler Bray, nobody wasted their talent in the history of Tennessee football more than Tyler Bray. Um, he was. That's why I don't know him. Yeah, he was a, he had the, he, if you looked at his arm, he played during the Derek Dooley years and Dave will, I think, back me up. If you looked at Tyler Bray's arm, no one was more physically cut out to be an NFL quarterback in Tennessee history than Tyler Bray. I mean, the most beautiful arm ever. And he did put up a lot of stats, but he was the worst leader. He purposely threw a game against Kentucky in 2011 because he didn't want to go to a bowl. And because he was mad that they were five and six or whatever at the time. And he's, to me, he's always been a disgrace to the university. And for him, who never won more than five games as a quarterback at Tennessee in any single season, to take a shot at Joe Milton when Tyler Bray had the potential to be a 10-year NFL veteran, I think is awful. And I think one of the things people bring up, and Spencer, I want to know what your thoughts are on this. People will say that Tyler Bray didn't have a lot of help on defense and Joe Milton's had a lot of help and things like that. My thing is I sometimes think that quarterbacks who are good leaders, even if they're not good, i.e. Peyton Manning his last year in Denver, other players will step up their game for that quarterback because they want to help that quarterback win. Is that is that the case? You would think so. You know what I mean? I, I definitely would think that's the case. You know what I mean? Um, I've always wanted my quarterbacks to be successful because if they're successful, it makes me look successful. You know what I mean? Even though I may not do my job right all the time and I may not be successful all the time, um, those are things that you just do as a, as a great teammate. And really not even a great teammate. It's what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? It's just a person. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like being a good dude. Um, you open the door for old ladies. That's, I mean, that's part of what being a person is. Um, I, let's move away from the Tyler Bray comment. But did we, now with Vanderbilt on the docket, Tennessee's probably going to go eight and four and set, and, unless something crazy happens against Vanderbilt. Did we get too enamored? And not you, because you're a coach, and you can see things that we can't see. But did we, as a Tennessee media contingent and a Tennessee fan base, get too wrapped up in the, whoa, he can throw an orange 105 yards. That Joe Milton, man, he can heave it 90 yards. I'd rather a quarterback be able to process quickly, be accurate, and not have the strongest arm that I've ever seen in my life. Um, that's me. Am, am I wrong, Spencer? 
No, you're not wrong. I mean, I think I think he does. I think he throws he can throw the ball forever, right? But it doesn't matter. I mean, let's be honest. Peyton Manning wasn't a very good deep ball thrower when he was in college. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not very good at it. You know what I mean? But he did a great job of doing all the other things. It doesn't matter how far you can throw a football, but if you can't execute the game plan, there's a problem. You know what I mean? I'll give you I'll give you an example. One of your all's first practices I went to, I saw this. I was walking on the practice field and I saw this ball soar through the air. And it was one of the most beautiful arcing passes I've ever seen. And I said, Well, that must have been Peyton Manning. I got a little bit closer and I saw that it was this guy named T Martin. So it but but it was a beautiful arching pass too, whereas I feel like Joe's trying to throw it through a brick wall every time. For sure. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, I agree with that statement. You know what I mean? Uh, there's not, there's not, you can throw it as hard as you want to, but sometimes you got to have a little bit of accuracy, right? It's just like being a pitcher. You can throw it 105 miles an hour. But if you throw it down the middle of the plate, hey, 105 still gets hit down the middle of the plate. Yep. That's right. I mean, but then there's Randy Johnson who uh, also might throw a wild pitch every now and then just to keep the batter scared. <laughs> that's okay too. That's part of, that's part, that's part of the game right there. <laughs> It's so weird you bring up Randy Johnson's name. For some reason, I had uh, the thought that I would look up when he hit that bird. <laughs> Do you remember that, Spencer? Oh, yeah. It exploded one? in midair. <laughs> that poor bird never felt a thing. No. Nah. I guess is, is a good nah. sign. I, any concern about Vanderbilt? Tennessee is – they're every bit as much better as Vanderbilt as Georgia is of Tennessee, I think. I think Tennessee would really have to stumble. I do like this leadership as a whole, although I don't think it's as good as last year. I have no reason to think they'll they'll stumble against uh, Vanderbilt. Do you? I don't think so. I mean, they are Vanderbilt, though. You know, what I mean, it's Vanderbilt. It is the uh, they are the, the step brothers of the Tennessee family here for sure. That's true. Well, I have a holiday weekend, so your book's going to be in the mail. Sweet, you're awesome. Thank Guys, you. I, pre- I appreciate it. Thank you all very much for having me on the show. Look forward to it next week. Yeah, we love it. Take care, Spencer. I appreciate it. Appreciate you. it, guys. Happy Thanksgiving to you and uh, every, all the listeners. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Caleb, happy Thanksgiving, buddy. Enjoy. Thanks. Have a good one, Spencer. I'm going to eat like an animal. I've been on the semi-diet all year, and I'm just going to eat everything that's in front of me, and that's the way things are going to go. But I don't know that we did. Maybe you a little bit, Caleb. But I don't know that we got enamored with the arm and the physical ability like some in the Tennessee fan base. I think some of the Tennessee fan base thought it's just a natural. You have a car that goes out there and it's the fastest. And I covered NASCAR for a long time. Handling around the turn, the turns determines how fast you can get through the turns. So you might be the fastest straight ahead but it doesn't mean you're the fastest being able to draft, having that innate ability to be able to pull up behind somebody and slip streams them and see their air. That's something that special drivers have. I would say that's analogous with touch passes. And I haven't seen a touch pass from Joe Milton that I can think of off the top of my head this year. Sometimes it works against you, which is that with driving, if, if you don't have control, operating a fast car actually makes you worse than operating a slower car would. You get too and, loose. Yeah. 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 And so I agree. I didn't, I don't, I didn't fall in love with Joe Milton's arm. I said the clock was reset on him. I had limited expectations for him this year. He didn't meet my limited expectations. I'll give you that. But I said the clock was reset after the Clemson game because he could throw passes. I thought he could throw passes over the middle. I knew he, had, he was going to have accuracy issues on the deep ball. What I didn't see, Dave, and I don't think any of us saw this because he didn't. We didn't. He didn't show much of it. We didn't realize his touch would be so bad over the middle, and I think that's what really shocked. I think it even shocked you to a degree this year, didn't it? This yeah, and it. Rocky Top Tom brought up that one touch pass against UVL UVA that could have been a seventy-five yard touchdown catch. I will give him that, and it's got to be tough for Joe Milton when he finally hits on one of those early and he feels good about it and is right in your hands in stride, and you're like, oh crap. He so, but you know that if you were going to build, if you were going to build any confidence from that play, that's destroyed. On the other hand, though, that sometimes happens because this is hard, it's horrible to say, but like sometimes receivers are so not used to the ball being thrown 
so accurately to him. So they're just, they're not in rhythm when it is thrown accurately to him. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I remember bef- it was, this is when Crompton was struggling a lot and under Dave Clawson there in 2008, there were about two direct passes to Lucas Taylor in that 14 to 12 Auburn loss. I think you remember that Dave. that may have been the worst game you ever had to cover. Probably the worst played game in the history of college football, that Tennessee Auburn game. Yes. And there were two drops by Lucas Taylor. Most of us were like, Lucas Taylor was probably shocked the ball hit him in the hands. I mean, probably. Um, now, another comment on the message board Joe Milton is built like a Ferrari in a, a Nissan dealership and throws like Favre. How can you not think he's a prototype? Well, Brett Favre also threw more interceptions than anybody in the history of the, the NFL. And I made Caleb giggle last week when I said, you know, to me, Joe Milton is like the nicest sports car going, i.e. a Ferrari, without a steering wheel. I just, what, are you going to hold on to that bar in the middle and try your best? uh, And also, Brett Favre was actually, we're forgetting this part. Brett Favre threw it really hard, but he threw it right on the dot. I mean, if you're going to throw it that hard over the middle, you got to hit the receiver in the chest. You can't make them have to stretch out even a little bit to catch the ball. You know what I mean? Because, like, you got to hit him in the chest. And Brett Favre, whatever else you want to say about him, and I got nothing good to say about him. Again, I think he's a despicable human being. But he knew how to hit his receivers directly in the chest. Um, I, I <laughs> And he was also in the chest, which has led him to sending pictures. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Hemp House, the premier hip dispensary online with a wide variety, great selection, and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. They've got the Big Orange Crunch. Use the promo code HOOKED and you will get 10% off. Use the promo code HOOKED and get 10% off Hemp House Chat with two T's. Hemp House Chat with two T's dot com. Much more to continue to unpack about this tennessee georgia game that i'll admit was a surprise and if you want to go ahead and take a shot at me then i'll take it i thought tennessee was going to play really really well and might play or might win tennessee did not play well did they 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 did not and they don't have an excuse of a fluky play in the beginning got you all out of sorts because they won the beginning Um, i mean they had the 70 plus yard touchdown run to Jalen Wright. So why this team didn't play harder, guys, I don't know. I thought but they Dave, had I thought they had great leadership and would and would play well. I didn't know that they'd win, but I thought they'd play well. And it makes me feel like this this group of leaders, they're just tired. They're just tired. And there was nothing tangible to play for on Saturday. Do you know how many games I've covered? where the lesser team had a really, really big play on like the first or second play of the game. And everybody's excited thinking they can pull off the upset. And then you realize that play was just a fluke play. The most notable one, by the way, is another game you covered, Dave. I'm going to remind you of it. The two that not the 2003 Miami game, the 2002 Miami game in Knoxville when on the second play of the game, Cedric Houston has like what a 76 yard run and gets down to the four yard line. And that's the only play Tennessee has the rest of the game. I mean, to me, the red flag of that play was the fact that Cedric Houston didn't even score a touchdown. Miami called up with him on that play. And that's where you, them catching up with him was where you saw how much better Miami is talent wise. Um, I kind of got the same vibe with this Jalen Wright touchdown run. I didn't even remember that touchdown run against Miami. I knew that was going to be a bludgeoning from the get because that's one of the best football teams I've ever seen in person. It's funny you bring that up. I don't even remember it. Uh, It A touchdown run. He had a clear path um, for a touchdown. And I forget the safety called up with him when he was like seven yards ahead of the safety. For a touchdown, the safety called up. And then when I look at that, I'm like, oh, it's over. I knew it was over then because I'm like, if they can catch up with Cedric Houston on this, there's no way Tennessee's winning this game. Travis says, I think this is the second most disappointing season in my life. Wow. I would take 99. Yeah, I would take 99 Tennessee. I would take 97 Tennessee um, because 99 was better than 98. I would take 97 um, because they had Peyton Manning and – they, they won the, the SEC state. in 97. They yeah. The SEC. So yeah, but they didn't win the national title. I think you wanted Peyton to win that. Um, I thought it was disappointing. I remember being at that SEC championship game thinking, man, this is a shame that he's not going to get to play for a national title. So that was disappointing to me. I guess I'm just talking personally. 2001, to make it to the SEC championship and not advance and play for the national championship, that was disappointing. 
Uh, Rocky Top Tom says 97, 99, 2001, 2003, 2008, 2016, 2017. Okay, so what I want you to do, Caleb, is I want you to let those soak in. I'm going to come back and I'm going to tell you, ask you if you think those seasons are more disappointing. Because I, I just, maybe it was my expectations that I doubted Joe Milton from the get. But I didn't think Tennessee was going to come out and win 10 games again. I just didn't. And if this is a bridge year, that's fine. I think the bigger concern is 2024 bridge year, especially on the offensive line. That's where you're suddenly in the, hey, you're winning eight games a year sort of thing. And that's what Tennessee does not want. Of course, Nico will uh, play a huge factor in that.